What's going on everybody? My name is Miller. I hope you're enjoying your day. Today's video is going to be a how-to for Conquest for new players, maybe old players that don't remember how to do Conquest or have never done Conquest before, and just kind of go over what I think the fastest way to do it is, what the most efficient way to do it is, and how quickly you can get through the tedious tasks of doing Conquest. But as always, before we jump into that, make sure you leave a like on the video. It helps me out a ton. Hit that subscribe button if you're new. We do daily MLB preview videos along with trying to do daily MLB The Show videos. We got tons of content coming your way. I'm very excited about that. So hitting that sub button helps me out a ton. As always, my Instagram and Twitter, TikTok, Discord, all linked in the description below. It would help me out a ton if you guys could join those. Follow me over there, and it would mean a lot. So thank you very much. Let's jump into how to play Conquest. So Conquest is something that a lot of people don't enjoy doing. A lot of people just don't do it. A lot of people don't know how to do it, especially if you're a new player, maybe an Xbox player that's just getting the game for the first time. But if you are one of those people who's never played Conquest before, or doesn't really know how to do it, or doesn't like it, I'm going to try and show you the most efficient way to do it, and why it's worth it, because you get a ton of rewards along the way. So, the first one I started, I started this, whoops, that's the wrong one. I started doing this AL East uh, map. I'm not, I don't know what it's supposed to look like, not a clue. Uh, but I'm my spaces are the ones with no logo because I haven't uploaded my logo yet just haven't gotten there yet uh, And as you can see I've kind of taken a weird pattern. Uh, I went straight to this uh, Where my cursor is right now. That was the Marlins stronghold. So I went there first and then I went over to the Philly stronghold and then uh, One other stronghold that I, I just can't remember honestly. I don't remember but you can see the pattern that I took. I went fr from right where I started, this, where the orange is, that's where I started. And then I went straight down to this stronghold. Right here, there was a stronghold there. Or sorry, there was a stronghold right here, where there's no number, where my logo should be. And then I went to this stronghold and this stronghold. And a lot of people, when they're doing conquest, they make the mistake of trying to get as many territories as possible right away. So if they get this stronghold, they're going to surround that stronghold. Uh, spread out their fans a little bit more, but I'm telling you that's not the most efficient way to do it And there's a reason why Because you're spreading out your fans You don't have as many fans to attack with which means you either have to skip ahead to do more turns to reinforce your fans Which I'll go over in a second or that means the CPU has more of a chance to Attack you and take those strongholds and you lose your progress see right now if after I am at this stronghold right here a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll go through and try and attack. So this is the Phillies. So they'll try and attack the Phillies and get rid of all their strongholds. But because the Phillies don't have more than two fans in any of the, their spots, they're not going to attack me. So I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about them impeding on my line. So instead, I'm going to go straight toward the Boston Red Sox stronghold because I want that stronghold first, and you get rewards for getting the strongholds. So... I'll just attack them here because there's no way around it. And then I'll just attack here. And then I'll do, I want to get as close to the Red Sox thing as possible. So I, I, it doesn't really matter. I'll just go here. And then uh, you can simulate all the games, all the games that you're not playing a, a stronghold. You can simulate all of them as I keep hitting the wrong button. So you never have to play a game unless it's versus a computer held stronghold, which is good. That definitely makes it. The time go by faster, and a lot of people get it confused. They think you have to play every single game, but that's not true. That would just take way too long. So I'm not going to jump through this game right now. You guys don't need to see that. But if what I, normally what I would do in this situation is if I'm still in the attack phase, so I would click on the Red Sox stronghold, and you can see that I only have 4 million fans, and the Red Sox have 8 million fans, which means I have to play all the way on Hall of Fame, which for this grind is not something I want to do because it's a little bit harder a little more tedious, the computer's better, and the computer has a better chance of beating you, and that's just a waste of time, you don't want that. Conquest isn't necessarily for fun, it's for the grind, it's for the rewards, uh, and everything you get while doing it. So, now I'm going to hit my pause button, and I'm going to skip to the steel fans phase, uh, and that's just skipping the attack phase, and I'll explain what steel fans is in just a minute. So I'm skipping to the steel fans phase, and uh, if you hit triangle down, down there on the left corner, you can see view goals. So I hit triangle and you can see what your goals are. These are everything that you have to do to complete this conquest map. So capture two enemy strongholds. I've already done that. Steal five million fans. Now on this one, I've already done that, uh, but I'll switch over to a different map to show you how you do that. 
because for me it's not going to show up right away. Uh, and then these are all like these all just happen as you do the map. There's nothing specific that you have to do about it. Uh, so actually, I don't need to switch to another map. So if I'm at Steel Fans, I can just hit X on any strong uh, uh, on any space that I'm on, and you can pick which team you want to steal your fans from. Now, there's a strategy to what team you steal your fans from. Yes, you have to steal five million fans, but if you're smart about it, you'll steal five million fans, or you'll steal fans from the team that you're closest to. So as you can see, as you saw earlier, the Red Sox have eight million fans to my four million fans that I'm attacking with. Because even though this says five million, I'm attacking with four because I'm not gonna abandon the, the space that I'm on. What I wanna do is I'm gonna steal fans from the Red Sox. Again, I'm not gonna actually do this right now, but for the purpose of the video, I'm just showing you what I would do. And so I'm gonna hit X, and you can choose what difficulty you wanna play on. So yes, you can play all, you can steal all five million fans in one game if you wanna play on Legend, if you're comfortable playing on Legend, but I wouldn't recommend it, especially for new players, because you're most likely gonna get beat by the CPU, because that's just how the game goes. So what I normally do is I will play on All-Star, I'll steal three million fans from the Red Sox, and then, um, once I do that, once I win that game, then if let's say I've, I'm, I beat the Red Sox, I beat their stronghold, what I'll do is I'll, instead of getting all the Red Sox spaces and completely eliminating the Red Sox from the map, if I have the Red Sox stronghold, I'll just attack here, here, and I'll go over to the Orioles stronghold as fast as I can. Now, after that, once I've reached the Orioles stronghold, instead of attacking the stronghold directly, what I'll do is I'll steal fans again. So Let's, in this situation, I've already stolen 3 million fans from the Red Sox. So, and the Red Sox wouldn't be here because I have their stronghold. I know it's a little bit confusing, but I don't want to have to jump through all the games. It'll just make the process a little bit longer and more confusing. So let's say I've beaten the Red Sox, I stole their 3 million fans, and I captured their stronghold. Now I'm right next to the Orioles stronghold, but I don't have enough fans to attack them with where I don't have to play on Hall of Fame. So... Because I've only stolen three out of the five million fans that I need to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to steal fans from the Orioles. And because I only need to steal two million, two million more fans, I'm just going to steal the fans from, uh, on Veteran rather than All-Star. And I'm just going to steal the two million fans. That will get me to the five million stolen fans that I need to complete the goal. And I'll get the rewards for that. I know it's a little confusing. If you guys have any questions, please comment down below. Feel free to DM me and I can definitely clarify any of what's going on. I know it's confusing. It's why a lot of people don't play Conquest, but it's super easy once you get the hang of it. I promise you it's worth it. So now let's pretend that I ended up, did, I, let's just pretend I did steal the fans. So we're going to skip this phase. Uh, in, re in reality, you will have done this. Uh, and now we're at the reinforce phase. And now this is nice as well because I've already stolen all the fans. I can always skip the steal fans phase. I don't need to steal fans on every single turn. I just need to steal 5 million fans. And then every time that turn comes up, I can just skip right, uh, right over it and go to the reinforce phase, which is really nice. It's very uh, time saving. And a lot of people think you have to steal fans every single turn, but you don't. So definitely don't, it's not worth it. Because as the turns get higher and higher, you get to reinforce with more and more fans. So if you remember back when the first time I tried to attack the Red Sox stronghold, I was attacking with 4 million fans, and they had 8 million fans, so I had to play on Hall of Fame. But now that I've skipped to the reinforce phase, I have 5 reinforcements remaining. Now, a lot of people will spread their fans out uh, evenly among their territories and try and, and make their whole line a little bit stronger, but the more efficient way to do it is reinforce, all, reinforce your territory that's right next to the stronghold that you're attacking. So I'm going to put all 5 million fans on this territory. So now that I have 10 million fans on this territory, right next to the Red Sox, uh, I can attack them next turn, next time I'm at the attack phase. So this phase is the move fans phase. It's not super important. It's only important if you say, let's say, for example, you're stuck down in this corner. Uh, you can see where the orange is against the rays. If you're stuck all the way down there, maybe you have four fans there and you wanna bring them back up, that's where the move fans phase is, uh, is nice, important, but Overall, move fans isn't super important. It's also very self-explanatory once you get there. So I'm just going to skip the move fans phase. So now you can see I'm back at the attack phase. And once I'm at the attack phase, I can attack the Red Sox. And now we both have 9 million fans, and I can play them on All-Star. And the difference between All-Star and Hall of Fame is, when I, I've noticed when I'm playing the computer, 
there's a huge difference. It's very easy to beat the computer on All-Star with just a little bit of practice, but for some reason, Hall of Fame, the computer becomes a god. I don't know why. I don't know why, but it's true. So again, I'm not going to actually play through this game, but you get the point. You can see that I, now I can play on All-Star rather than Hall of Fame, and it's a lot easier. There's another trick to Conquest to make it a little bit easier. There's a couple tricks, actually. You never want to score a ton of runs against a computer on Conquest. And what that means is, if you are able to score like three or four runs in the first inning, just bunt the rest of the time. Because most of the time, you're not going to give up more than three runs to the computer. There are rare instances where the computer does hit home run after home run off of you, and sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. The computer just decides it's going to win that game. And you know what? That sucks, but you move on, you quit out, whatever. But if you get that three-run lead, four-run lead, just bunt the rest of the way and get the game over with as fast as possible because that's going to make the Conquest map go faster, you're going to get the rewards faster, and it's going to make the grind just a little bit less tedious. Conquest isn't fun all the time, like I said. It's definitely tedious, but it is worth the grind because of all the rewards you get. I'll go over that in just a sec. Now, the second trick to making Conquest games go faster is picking pitchers that have a fast windup. And we all know, if you're new to the game, there are some pitchers that just have the slowest, deathly worst lineups. Uh, Walter Johnson is one of those guys. Lefty Grove is one of those guys. It's a, a lot of the old-time guys have slow windups. Masahiro Tanaka had a very slow windup. So you want someone who's pitches out of the stretch, someone who doesn't rest for a long time when they're pitching, and you can just get right to it and fire those pitches as fast as possible. The first one that comes to my head is you Darvish. He pitches from the stretch. It's very fast. Sometimes in Conquest, you can, um, you can, because in Conquest you can pitch, you can pick your pitcher. Uh, a lot of times it's faster to just pick a relief pitcher. So don't don't start a starter because normally they're going to go from the windup. It's going to be longer. But if you pick a reliever, they're most of the time they're going to go from the stretch, and it's way faster. You're not saving that much time, but it does save probably a few minutes every game and it makes the grind less tedious. And that's what we're trying to do here. Make the grind less tedious, make this more efficient, so that way you can get all the rewards as fast as possible. Now, the last trick to Conquest is, and I can show you this here. Let's pretend I'm attacking the Red Sox. Um, because you can, automatic, you can pick your pitcher, you didn't used to be able to, uh, and not until MLB The Show 20 were you able to pick your pitcher in Diamond Dynasty. It used to be a random wheel, but now you can so what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick my fifth starter. If I pick Pedro Martinez, that means the Red Sox are going to pitch their number one starter against me, which is Chris Sale. And Chris Sale is a lot harder to hit than uh, the Red Sox number five starter. Tanner Hawk or Martin Perez is a lot easier to hit in this game than Chris Sale is. So that's why I'm gonna pitch Chris Paddock, my fifth overall starter, and make them pitch their fifth overall starter. Now, I, I did mention earlier that pitching a reliever meant that the game was going to go faster because they're going to pitch from the stretch a lot more often. But if you do pick a reliever, the, that means your computer is going to pick their number one starter. Now, if you're not worried about facing their number one starter because it's just the, it's just the computer, it doesn't really matter, it's just on all-star, then by all means, pick the reliever and deal with having to face the starter. But if you're not as comfortable playing uh, against the computer on all-star or not as confident in your hitting skills, then it's definitely worth it to pick your number five overall starter so that you get to face their worst pitcher and um, maybe score a few more runs. And in Diamond Dynasty, your number five starter is almost always a diamond or a gold, and it's way better than the live series team's fifth starter. You're never going to face, like most of the live series uh, teams have like bronze or common fifth starters, maybe a silver, uh, but so those, aren't, those guys aren't hard to score off of, especially on the computer. So the last thing you guys need to know for Conquest is uh, that's the most efficient way to get all of the strongholds, like I said, all the tips that I just gave you. But the most tedious part about it is after getting all of the strongholds, you will have to go through and get all the territories on the map. But once you get all the strongholds, you don't have to play any games. You just have to simulate all the games. It does take a little bit, but it's not hard. It's just getting all the strongholds, simulating all those games, worth it for the rewards like I mentioned before. And there was a little bit of strategy to it. Like once, let's say I have all these black spots. I have, let's say I have the whole right side of the map. So from here down, basically straight down. If I have all of that, then I want to make a straight line 
right down the middle, so that way the computer, Blue Jays, Nationals, and Braves can't attack me and uh, maybe take over any of my old strongholds. I don't want that because if the computer attacks a stronghold and wins, then you have to play that stronghold again, which makes the progress longer, process longer and more tedious, which is again, not what you want at all. So guys, that's my tips and tricks for conquest. I hope this clarified things. I know I just threw a lot of information at you. If you have any questions, again, please DM me. I can do a follow-up video to this if you guys need it. Leave your questions down in the comments below. Share this video with your friends if they're confused on how to do conquest. I appreciate you all hanging out with me. And I got, guys, I will see you in the next one. Make sure you turn those notification bells on so you don't miss when every video goes live. Like I said, I've got a ton of content coming your way. Peace out.